When trout are feeding deep on coronomy pupa, there's not a lot of light down there, so you need a pattern that's going to stick out. Let me show you one that's worked very well for me. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my YouTube channel and to my fly tying bench. If you've been here before, thanks for dropping by once again. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I create fly tying and fly fishing video content that I hope makes your next day on the water just that little bit more successful. You know, when trout are taking coronomy pupa deep, there's not a lot of light down there. And blues and purples are one of the last colors in the color spectrum to remain visible. Have I ever seen a blue or a purple coronomy pupa? Not in recent memory, but my deep blue sea seems to work when we're fishing deep. It also isn't too shabby when you're fishing shallow too. So join me, let me show you how I tie it. So let's tie the deep blue sea. In the jaws of the vise, I've got a size nine Alec Jackson silver covered hook. This is equivalent to a size 10. I'd probably tie this in the 9 and the 11, which would be uh, equivalent to a 12. This is a large attractor style fly bomber imitation designed to be fish deep. So um, it's going to have a, uh, a red butt on it. So to, uh, to tie that, we're going to use some of the Semperfly Classic Waxed in red, 8 aught. And for the bead, I've got a 764 white brass bead for the Size 10s, I'd use 7 64ths, sorry, for the 9, 7 64th. You could tie this on a Daiichi 1760 10. And for 12s, I would use the 332nd, or a size 11 would be a 332nd. And we're just going to get that thread started right behind the bead. Trim away the excess. Give that bobbin a counterclockwise spin to flatten the wraps and go down about halfway. Stop, spin, and go back up to the bead. We're slowly building in a taper. So I'm being very deliberate doing this way um, so I can repeat it and have consistency with my flies when I'm tying in batches. So I've got that laid down. For the ribbing we're going to use um, some small silver wire. So I'm just going to actually, if I can, stab it into the rear of the bead to hold it in position and secure it. As I do on all my previous videos, I always like to secure my wire along the near side of the shank. And you see how I'm pulling the wire sort of straight towards me and allowing the, th the thread to actually wrap onto the wire and slide down and this makes sure you have nice adjacent wraps with no spaces. And be slow and deliberate when you're first tying this so you get the hang of it. And then you can pick up the tempo once you get the technique down. So we'll just give that, again, every once in a while stopping to give this a nice spin. So we're going to secure this all the way down. And you want to go slightly into the bend. So the way I like to do this is I wrap the thread down to approximately to the back of the crush down barb. So right back here, not halfway. Usual standard for many other flies is uh, halfway between the point and the crush down barb. But we're going down a little further and then we're going to come up. And then when I get to about the halfway point, sorry, just in front of the hook point, almost to the hook point. I'm just sort of gauging this, doing it very slowly. I'm going to tie in the body material because we're going to do a subtle blending technique where the red underbody here is going to bleed through or blend with the overbody. And the overbody in this case is blue buzzer wrap in steelhead blue. This is where the deep blue comes from in this pattern's name, deep blue sea, deep blue coronament. Because blue is one of the last colors in the color spectrum to remain visible at depth or in low light conditions. Blues and purples, so that's why we're using it. So I'm just going to take a section of this and I'm just going to tie this in. 
minimally just get that tied in like so and then wrap this up covering all of it up so it doesn't negatively impact the blending process which I'll explain in a second so we've got the ribbon and the body and now we're just going to build up the thread underbody by spinning counterclockwise and then you can use our thumb and forefinger to further flatten the wraps and one wrap right next door to the other and build up a nice taper so we've gone down the hook and back to the halfway point when we started and then we've gone all the way down and now we're coming all the way back up so we've got two and a half layers of thread on here so now we're going to I like the look of that we're going to go down about three quarters of the shank now when you're building up these tapers and you're going to put an overbody over this fly like we are with the buzzer wrap you've got to factor in the thickness of that material as well this buzzer wraps pretty thin so I can almost do this as though I was going to do a thread body but if I was using something like a scud back for the um, the overbody then I might not um, have so much thread underbody because the thickness of that scud back is going to add to the overall thickness of the fly so you got to always think about that so again it's spinning it and then we'll go back up and keep spinning it and flattening it all the way up like so and I'm liking how that's coming together and then we're going to go down about halfway halfway to a third because the, the majority of the taper in a coronamid pupa is in the front half to third of its body this is just so we have a nice natural looking profile that the fish are used to seeing because the shape or profile of your fly no matter whether you're tying coronamids or dragonfly nymphs or water boatmen, back swimmers, leeches is always important it's one of the keys at least it is for me so we're just going to bring this up I'm liking how that's looking and then we're going to come in and we're just going to do a quick three turn whip finish because we're going to transfer our thread because we're going to put a little bit of a hot spot thorax on here um, so it stands out a little bit better at depth and that for this fly we're going to use some of the Semperfly A dot because we're tying a big fly in the classic waxed in orange you could also use a fluorescent orange or a fire orange some bright hot orange bright orange coloration this not only suggests the hot spot a little bit of a trigger point if you will but also helps do a reasonably good job suggesting the gills sorry not the gills that's what the white beads for for suggesting the wing pads that rust brown or burnt orange coloration of the natural uh, pupa's wing pad so it kind of blends in there but when we get the blue over body it's going to be fine so we're going to wrap the body forward so in the beginning now we just get this we want to blend this so when we uh coat the body some of the blue will bleed through sorry the, the blue will be the main primary color but some of the red's going to bleed through at the back of the fly because the red is suggesting the residual hemoglobin um, of, uh, from the larval stage that sometimes traps itself along the abdominal segments or a lot of times in the butt section the tip of the abdomen so I'm just going to go through and I'm actually spacing the ribbing out here sorry the ribbing the body material and then when I get to about the halfway point now I close it up and wrap right close to each other so what will happen on the finished fly is that red will bleed through those gaps in the body and just give that nice subtle blending effect and then we're going to go down a little bit so that again this is where that I had that discussion on your um, uh, factoring in the thickness of the body material and then back up again so what we're doing is there's different layers or levels of this blue or steelhead blue buzzer wrap on there that when we coat the fly will allow some of that underbody that red underbody to bleed through or what's often referred to now as a blended coronament because it's a blend of two colors so we're just going to trim this off a few extra wraps for added security and then we're just going to come through with our silver ribbing and put, if I can one turn right through the middle of that butt one turn right 
just on the first part of the blue. And we're trying for seven segments. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and up. If it's eight, it's not the end of the world on a larger hook. On a smaller hook, it's six. But we're just trying for consistency. It's not like we the fish can count. So I've got that secured right up to the rear of the bead. And then I'm just going to pull it, come in, and just helicopter that wire until it breaks. Now all it's left to do is build up our thread collar or thorax. And standard proportions for a thread collar, at least for me on chronomids, is they don't extend any further back than the length of that bead. So be nice and subtle, nice gentle slope on this. So when you go to whip finish, the thread wraps are not going to tumble back down a steep slope. So take your time with it. And then again, just don't need too many wraps here. Two, three is fine uh, because this entire fly gets a coating. So we just pull on that, keep it under tension, trim that, nice flush cut. You can sort of see already that some of that red is bleeding through and it'll get magnified when we coat the fly, which is what we're going to do next. I'm going to use some of the Solera's Bone Dry and just coat. You can even coat the bead a little bit to put a little more protective coat on there for any accidental chipping that might happen. And we're just going to roll this fly around and distribute the Bone Dry over top like so. And you can see how that really kind of, that blending comes right in. And these, these uh, coatings are so great because they, they're thin. You can, don't build up too much bulk, yet they don't run all over the place. So we'll just turn on our lamp and cure the body. It takes just a few seconds. Just come at it from all different angles. Make sure that's good and cured. And then for a little added luster and to protect, sometimes with these coatings you get a little time to fly on, a little bit of your body oils on there, muffles the, the shine a little bit. A secondary coat of brushable nail polish like good old Sally Hansen's here. Just very thin, just brush it ever so lightly. All the way along like that. And that doesn't cure quite as fast, but you can sort of see how that red is bleeding through a little bit. And the predominant color is blue. And this is a, a favorite combination I like to use when I'm fishing deep uh, situations like 15, 20 feet down uh, where light is uh, an issue. And this blue coloration is just one of the last colors to fade on the color spectrum. It's just a fly I have confidence in when I'm fishing uh, in deep water um, I want to make my fly stand out, so add a few deep blue seas to your box as well.